Arthur Silver, Jr. Now, you grew up in this showbiz. You know when you see good talent like that. Oh, sure you Sammy do. Davis, Jr. Hey, your father handled Sammy Davis, Jr. for many years. How sure. many? Before he died, uh, see, 40, about 13, 14 years. 14 years. Your father and Sammy were very, very close. He yes. Very, very close. And uh, you wrote a book about this, Me and My Shadow. What a title, Me and My Shadow. You know, this is the book. And uh, what made you decide to write this book, Arthur? Um, for years, my wife tried to get me to write this book. And I was, you know, busy doing my, you know, doing my thing. Right. And um, there had been so much negative publicity. Sammy uh, Gus. About Sammy. Yeah. Over the years, uh, there was an article in one of the, uh, uh, matter of fact, it was a star uh, about Sammy that I read it on a plane and it got me so mad that I just said, that's it. You want the world to hear the, the good you know, side. Yeah. That, that's it. And I'm going to do it. And once, there was once in Australia, um, was, Sammy and I were talking late at night. We always talk, did late at night after the shows. We just right. two of us sit there. And uh, I just made the comment, says, you know, one day I'll probably write a book, Sam. He says, and he got very serious. And he said, if you do sober, and he very seldom, when he really wanted to talk to me yeah. straight, he <laughs> called me by the last day. If you really do it sober, do it right. And I think I have. He did everything right in his life. He seems to. Look at this. This is the beginning. This is at the Apollo Theater. Look at that sign with, um, my God, Will Master Trio, Sammy Davis, Fran Warren's in this. And Red Fox. And Red Fox. This is the original Apollo Theater in New York. Correct. And I love that little theater. It's such a great theater. Tell me about, look at all these pictures. We're different shots. Look. Well, people, you know, it's a very rare shot. I just got that. Uh, playing usually, drums. Look at him playing drums here. He's playing drums. Guitar. And guitar. Trumpet. Right below that. Right there, the trumpet. Look at that. Right there. Tell me, who are these people off this plane? Arthur meets Sammy in 1946. Wow. Who are these people? My father uh, took a show to Hawaii for the 442nd Nisi that fought with us during the Second World War. Right. And this was a small vaudeville show. Uh, this is my father right here. Right. Uh, and this is me. And, okay. Uh, you know, this is me. And there's Will, Sam Sr., and Sammy is right here. Then the right. rest of the people are, you know, they're on the show. On the show, right. It was actually a vaudeville type of show. That's exactly it? what it was. It was a vaudeville. Exactly. Uh -huh. This is your dad in 1950? No, that's me. That's you, Arthur? Me and Sammy. Oh, my God. Look at you there. Look how young you were. Yes. And look thin, I, too. I, I, and I, I, thin. Been, yeah. You were very thin. Oh, I love the queen. Is this the queen? It's queen the mother. Queen mother. That was Sammy's, Sammy's second, second Royal Command performance. Ah, uh, look at her. Did one for the queen, then for the queen mother, and one for Princess Grace. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was great. Who's next to Sammy there? There's the, this one right here. Let me see. I haven't a clue. You, oh, you don't? No, not a clue. Uh, this is you and uh, Sammy at the Royal Command performance. No, that's a, no. That's actually we uh, was we're uh, we're off on a flight. Okay. To 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 London, and that was taken outside of the plane ah. before we before we got on the plane. Was Sammy very close with Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> I wouldn't say that close, but he was a close. He was a lot closer than a lot of people thought because of Sammy's connection with Peter Lawford. Lawford. And and. Uh, you know, we used to go down to, to, to Peter's house when Marilyn was there. I used to drop uh -huh. him off. Here's Marilyn we, now. Yeah. Look. That's, yeah, yeah, Marilyn and I. And uh, Sa there, Sammy had just, um, you see, his ice patch is still on. With his, This was before he had and his And look grandson. who's up there in the corner up here, right there. Jeff Chandler. Jeff Chandler, who Sam died Sam unnecessary. Very unnecessary. A, that, a was a, that was a, a medical oops. Yeah. 
appendix. Mar uh, uh, Merle's Marauders. Uh -huh. was, he was making that movie in the jungle, and they had to have an. Is this an original opening. postcard of of Christmas? That is. We just found that too. Uh, yes, that was what the, the Will the, what they sent out, and on the that's the front side of the postcard, and on the back was you know uh -huh. their na their names signed, and they just mailed them out. Yeah. That was yeah. it. It was that's very simple. Very look how cute. Sammy looked there. He looked. Here. Well, very, very, very young. Young. There. How old very was he about there. there? There? Yeah. Would you say? Oh, yeah. I guess. Let's see. It would be that would be 1940. Let's see. It was 25. 1950. Where did you get this picture of Marilyn? Well, wow. if you look at the next picture, Skippy, yes, I'll I will. show you. Look at Marilyn. The, That's a great we, shot. Sammy and I used to hang out at the studios uh -huh. when we weren't doing anything. Yeah. We were. Country Fox on this day here, and they were shooting How to Marry a Millionaire, and she was doing the song Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. That's the gown that she was wearing that day because right. she was doing the song. She she had made a, a deal with somebody in England for the Is commercial. That you right there? Yeah, Look for how this car. Thin you were. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, really. And she these two pictures here. Right. She had them, and she autographed one to Sammy and one to me. The one you just showed is a copy of the one to of me. this one, this yeah. one right here. The original is, is, is going on sale on Sotheby's at the first of the year. You're going to sell it? The original. Why? I have a copy, huh? Well, oh, you have, you have more. Is that it? Oh, yeah. I have, I have a copy that looks exactly like the original. You, oh, can, you okay. can't tell the difference. What's this checks, the signing of the checks here? Well, no, that's, this is... This is when Sammy and I got together to form Sam Art Enterprises. This is the business license. It's not a check, and this oh. is our business card. Oh, it is. Crossroads of the World. Look at the address on Crossroads the Crossroads of the World. When I first came to Hollywood at nine years old, that's where my mother took me to get an agent. And your father was an agent there. That's right. A very big agent in yes. Crossroads. Correct. And his name was right out there. I know. I remember that as a kid. Yeah. Because I used to go to Monogram to do a lot of film work. What is this life in pictures? This well, is your new this, book. Right. Your new book. This is your book you just finished. Right. And you got and you got look at this. You got an award for the best book of Hollywood. Best Hollywood book of the year. Really? That's great. That was just uh, two months ago. Two months. How do you feel about that one? Very happy. Huh? That's a very Are you married, Arthur? Very Are you oh, married? Yeah, have yeah, kids and coming everything? up on forty seven years. Uh huh. Oh. What made you decide to write another book? Well, because of the first book, there's 350 pictures in, in, the, in, 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 this book? in this book here. And all through it. You almost right, can, can hardly right. find a page that doesn't have a picture on it. Uh, it was written as you go through the life. We, because Sammy and I were photographers, that was a hobby. Right. We had, I literally have about 2,700 pictures, uh -huh. part from his original Scrapbook, first scrapbook he ever had, mm -hmm. which became my property. Uh, there's the story behind that, which I won't get into now. Right, too right, long. right. But uh, at any rate, I have had so many comments because nobody has ever seen the pictures in this book. They were mine alone. Mm -hmm. And people said, what great pictures, what great pictures. That's all I kept hearing. And then, then one agent told me, these Go are ahead. the favorite people of Sammy Davis right here. Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Julia Prouse. Julia Prouse. Jack Benny. Jack Benny. And, and Sammy. Sammy. He loved these people, didn't he? Yeah, those, these were these were what we call family within right. within the group, you know. Uh huh. Um, and so, at any rate, so everybody kept saying, "You've got to put out a coffee table book. You've got to put out a coffee table book." Thus. So the this new, is the, the new, new book. One. Will be a coffee table book. The vaudeville and the Rat Pack and beyond. Yeah. I want to know something. Sammy Davis has opened the doors for the blacks of the world, especially for show people. And Vegas, people don't remember that Vegas. You had to go around the back if you were black, you right? Sure did. You were there. I Tell was me. there. And Sammy said, "No way. If I'm going to work this room." You're going to, I come through. Come Tell through me about this. I want to know. Okay, well, it all happened at the, at the Frontier Hotel when he first did it. Um, to, shorten this, to shorten the story, um, he was appearing there. Now, I could stay at the hotel. Right. Sammy could not. <laughs> and so one day he says to me, because he would come to my room in between shows, and because he had a place to hang out instead of right, sitting in the dressing right, room. Right. Where else could he go? He says, all right, come on, let's go get something to eat. 
And I looked at him. I said, okay. And we walked into the casino. Right. That was a huge no-no because we were talking to mob now. Right. And uh, you mean the mob really had that? Oh yes. Statement? Oh yes. <laughs> free to open doors for anybody. Why would they be? A they no. They didn't want. They didn't want. They didn't want the blacks in Las Vegas. They, You're joking. They no, sir. Go and uh, so, at any rate, when we went into the casino on our way to a restaurant, which Sammy was not allowed to do either. Right. He was naturally mobbed because he's the star of the show, and people yeah. noticed him. So we spent what little time we had out in front, mm -hmm. you know, autographing and talking to people and so on and so forth. So when we got to the back, right, for getting ready for the second show, uh, Sammy went into the dressing room, and Will, his uncle, who is from old time, real old time, you know, mm -hmm. don't move, don't say anything wrong, don't sit in the right place or walk in the wrong street and all of that, he jumped all over Sammy, and so did Sammy's father. Well, Sammy just, that was it. That was a straw. Yeah. Sammy just jumped all over Will, really told him off. He, he got very hysterical, and he went outside, and he went to my room. Right. And we weren't in that room four minutes, and somebody knocking on the door. Hotel manager and casino manager. That's it. What did you guys do? And so on and so forth. Make th this story shorter, because it, it can carry on. Right. Um, Sammy said, and he was very respectful. And he spoke very fluent English, believe it or not. He didn't talk in the eubonics at all. And uh, he always pronounced his words. Didn't exactly. He? And and uh, people yeah. and people in the black community put him down for that. They did. They did. And, and for many years. And um, said, what he, they thought he was trying to put on something put on, and it yeah. was natural to him. Yes. But at any rate, he they he told them uh, the guys from the hotel, the boss. He's, he vir virtually said, he said, look, he said, I'm very sorry I, uh, caused any, if I caused any problems, so on right, and so forth, right. but I tell you what, he says, you go into the dressing room mm -hmm. and you tell my dad and my uncle, these are exact words, to get ready and get in their tuxedos to, and go out and perform the second show. And until I can walk through this casino mm -hmm. door mm -hmm. and stay at this hotel, they will be doing the show. Mm -hmm. And these guys were really taken aback, really. And but they, that. But broke, what happened that to Nat it. King Cole before Sammy Davis Jr.? That door. That door. Nat King Cole took it. Took it. Nat King Cole. Nat, took Dorothy, it. Dorothy. Dorothy. Yes. Nat King Cole. Dorothy Dandridge. Ella Fitzgerald. They all Lena took Horn, it. Uh, uh, Louis Armstrong. Lena we could, Horn we could at go MGM on and on and on. Was one of the biggest stars at MGM, oh. even going to. Vegas didn't make any difference. Ella Fitzgerald was pretty big too. She went big, into the big. She was in Reno and she went. It was at Harris, and uh, she just had it with that walking through the back. And she said she would so never Sammy play Reno. Sammy really again. opened the door then. That was the, that's what opened the door. And I look at Nat King Cole touching one Sammy of Sammy's there. closest friends and look one of at, my dad. Look at Sammy uh, like a little boy. That was Nat. taken at the Royal Command performance in London. Nat King Cole just oh what a great. Yeah. I met Nat King Cole. He was a great gentleman. He was a gentleman. Really a gentleman. A gentleman. No question about Tell it. Tell me about the f something happened between Sammy and Peter Lawford and Sinatra. What happened? It all started with the Kennedy. Right, in Palm Springs. And um, Sammy did a lot of... Uh, the benefits and things for Kennedy. Right. And uh, because of the closeness of, of those guys, the quote, Rat right. Pack, bah. Where but, did uh, that name come from, Rat Pack? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Rat Pack came from uh, Lord, Lauren Bacall. Lauren and Bacall had, had nothing that. to do with Frank Sinatra or any of those people. She it had to do with her husband, Errol Flynn, and a couple of other people uh -huh. were in his den. Both guys did, and they were all drinking, and she walked by the door, and she said, you know, made some caustic remark about, there they are, the Rat Pack. Uh -huh. And somehow it just got out, and then it got pinned it got, on, it got pinned on that's Sammy. That's what happened. That's, so how, that's how it really happened. Yeah, yeah. She was there. Yeah, it came from her mouth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's interesting, because I love Lauren Bacall, and I think, you know something, Humphrey Bogart, they were close too, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They, they were. He did. Well, Sam was a great movie buff. That's why we always hung out in studios, you know. Uh -huh. So he met so many people uh, back in those days, you uh -huh. know, in, in, in during all during the fifties, you know. Right, right. That was, you know, mega stars. There's not very few people in this business today that were as big as those stars were. But in, Jeff in Chandler was his real good friend. Very close friend. Why is that? Tell me. I have to know. I 
It's hard to explain. Not I a just gay don't know thing why. at all. We there all were rumors about Sammy being bisexual. Come on. Oh, there was always. It's always there was always rumors. Like he had seven feet. I mean, it's always. Yeah, or he was a dove, devil cult worshiper. That's the thing that set me off. By the way, in his Star magazine, uh, he was not. Sammy used to go off. He walked on the edge a lot, but he never really got until he got way up big and really then then he got the drugs got started and that's Did where he take a lot of drugs then the, well I don't know I quit you, oh you quit okay okay you don't and want to talk, uh, okay uh, no I don't have any problem with it. I did because uh -huh. I, I I would first the mob fired me for a few years that's that's another story which the which, mob which, fired you mo the mob fired me why because Sammy and I formed Sam Art Enterprises to like an entrep do a lot of entrepreneurship things to, right. For the income to come in where the mob couldn't control it. Right. They could control the money he made from the nightclubs and stuff because they owned them. Uh huh. But um, so we, we started Sam Art Enterprises. And I gave several different things. We started out, we could have both been millionaires. Mm -hmm. Guy comes in one day and throws a little plastic Y looking thing on the dead with a little hook on the back of it. That's all it was. And he says, Here, 2500 you got 51%. So. I started laughing, of yeah. course, and uh, he, then he told me what it was. I picked up the phone. Sammy was in New York because I then had to stay in L.A. a lot because right. of the Sam art. And I told him what it was. Now, $2,500 is nothing to Sammy. He, right. he would pay that going to the drugstore. He helped a lot of people. Man. Oh, yeah. I heard he helped a lot oh, sure. of people. Sure, sure, sure he, he did. He threw bet. money away. Money meant nothing to it. And the taxes, the that's government what, of what, this country that's what got made him, him broke. That's well. Well, he he we, he did he a long way of making millions, him, making himself broke. Uh, did he uh, gamble? Huh? Did yeah. He, he did gamble. He did. That was one of that's. Uh, he lost a lot of money and won a lot of money. Sammy pl went in Vegas. What? I, I, now we have to jump ahead to when no, he was that's okay. major, major, major uh, star. Right. Whenever he was in Vegas and playing the hotels, right. He played every Keno game for ev or every game that was played for the entire time he was there. You're kidding. One right after the other. He played. And he played heavy money. And when he hit, yeah, of course he was bound to hit, yeah. he would run through the halls in the dressing room giving $100 bills to everybody. Uh -huh. And he called it lucky money. Uh -huh. And you couldn't, you couldn't go out and buy a suit or a shirt. Or, uh -huh. You had to go out and gamble with it. Elvis Presley did the same thing. I understand Elvis in Vegas, he was sweet to all his people. Tell me about Angie Dickinson and Lana Turner and Shirley MacLaine. What is this all about? These ladies. Well, uh, they were part. They were the, as you call the James Bond girls, the Bond girls. This, this was the Rat Pack girls. The Rat Pack girls. The Rat Pack okay. girls. And uh, they were all friends because at one time or another, one or the others was going with one of the, you know, Frank right, or some, right. somebody. You know, not Sammy. Sammy w was not involved in female situation. Yeah, with but any, how did he meet girls. Mae Britt, though? How did he? Where did she in come from? Twentieth I mean, Century Fox. Right. Uh, Mai was doing uh, a, a movie there, Blue Angel. Right. And uh, Sammy and I were there with Barbara Luna, mm -hmm. having having uh, having lunch. And in walks Mai. Of course, she was you know very statuesque and really beautiful. Right. Different, nordically beautiful, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Sammy spotted her, but I saw her first because <laughs> she was walking towards us. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, "Wow!" And so Sammy, that she looked around, and then he turned to Barbara and says, "Who is that?" And she says, "Oh, that's." My Brett, she's doing Blue Angels, yeah. so on and so forth. He says, I've got to meet her. He says, no, she likes to be alone. And she did. She ate, sat down and had lunch. And the story goes that eventually uh, he, uh, there was a party uh, that Barbara Luna th threw mm -hmm. for, for a bunch of people. Sammy was invited. Mm -hmm. And he, she purposely invited Mai because Sammy wanted to meet her, wanted her phone number. And Barbara right. Luna would not give it to him. She said, not without her permission. So, uh -huh. But that's how they first actually met right right and then right. it took off from there by itself I have to know about Sammy Davis's accident what the day coming from Vegas or going to Vegas the accident of the eye okay uh, please Tony Curtis is making six bridges to cross a big movie and he asked Sammy to do the title song and Sammy was in Las Vegas b back at, at the frontier again actually that and Frontier has bad luck, it seems. <laughs> it for, really does. For, for, Go for, ahead. For him, for him yeah. then it did. Yeah. And so after the second show, Sammy and Charlie, his valet at the time, were going to drive in to Universal, do the song, and then right. drive back. Yeah. 
and because uh, he, you know, he didn't take any time off. He was going to, and his, he was coming into uh, San Bernardino. At that time, Highway 10 stopped at San Bernardino. They were building the freeway at that right, point in time. Right, right. And uh, Sammy was, because that's a fast way to get into L.A. then. Yes. So at, at, just as you come into San Bernardino, the old Highway Route 66 Six. split. Mm -hmm. And there was two elderly women in a very big Chrysler. Uh, who had meant to go on Route 66. They didn't even know about the freeway. Right. And they'd stopped their car. It was like a piece of pie in the right. road. And what they did was they backed up this big Chrysler Imperial oh. across the road. Then it was only a two-lane highway. Go ahead. And Sammy saw it. And, you know, he s went to swerve to the left, and there were two cars coming the other way. Wow. So he had no place to go. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. No. Yes. So he just said, well, I'll try to go between the back of the car right. and the other. He hit that up. He was going about 55 miles an hour, and oh. he hit that Chrysler and just knocked the jack right through the roof in the other car. And the, the two women in the front, the back seat, was, the front seat went into the back seat. Oh. He careened off of them, and as he did, the first car coming at him mm -hmm. went by. Mm -hmm. And he went between the first and the second car and across the road, and he hit, he hit a, 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 a stone abutment, which was the entrance to a driveway to somebody's house, right, head right. on which drove the engine back into the car. Actually, it drove the engine into the seat, and it pushed the seat to the yeah. back seat. When Charlie was laying down the back seat. He broke both his jaws, lost all his yeah. teeth. But anyway, Sammy hit his eye on the cone of the horn. Well, it was That's Cadillac. where it happened. On That's where cone. it happened. He okay. hit his eye, and a lot of people don't know, he also broke his nose and cracked his left kneecap right, right, right. on the emergency brake. And um, he literally popped his eye like a grape. It, it did pop. Down. And Cadillac yeah. changed, changed the design of their steering wheel because of that accident. You're kidding. That's true. Mm, that's scary. That is really scary. It was a scare, those, those were scary days. Those I want to know how he got along and when he heard, when he woke up from the hospital. What happened the moment? How did he take I was there. Did he There was me. just family were there. And he, scared. Naturally he scared. He was scared. First of all, they had patch his, both his eyes were covered because somehow the nerves of both eyes right, relate right, to right, one right. another. And they didn't know whether he might lose the sight of the good eye. Yes. And he was. So he was worried ab about that. And then when he finally they took it off and he could see out of the good eye, Yes. then he was worried about, will I ever be able to dance? How can I keep my yes. balance? Is, mm -hmm. His uncle worked on his left side and he couldn't see past his nose. Right. It was a whole lot of things. You know something? He is one of the greatest entertainers in the world I have ever seen. Judy Garland, to me, was one of the greatest. Sammy Davis Jr. is the other. As entertainer, I have seen them both performed. Yeah. They give you such thrill in your veins that you cannot, this is, this is what you call real showbiz, this man right here. There's, there's, that, there's not that around anymore.
I want to wish each and every one of you a happy, happy new year. This is uh, 2007, right? I've been on public access for at least 35 years. Uh, there's a lady who has books. She, I can't remember her name. Do you remember her name, the book lady? Connie Matrison. Connie and I are the very first ever on public access in California. And um, I've been doing these showcases since I traveled all over the world. And I was a comedian traveling. And, and I decided to stay here in Hollywood. And I got an award last week from the city of West Hollywood for the best public access show. This is my second year the award came to me. And I really want to thank the West Hollywood in Los Angeles for giving me the award. I really appreciate it. Uh, also, I want to say that I wrote a book. It's called The Boy with the Betty Grable Legs. It's a, a showbiz memoir of my life. You can get it at any bookstore. And um, it's an outrageous look if inside of Hollywood and also my life. Uh, growing up here in Hollywood as a child actor. And um, then I, you know, I left here as 15 years old. I went to New York, and it's all in the book. Stayed with my aunt, and I became a comedian in New York, you know, up in the Catskills. But I met a lady when I was in Paris uh, in 1960. Uh, this beautiful lady... Margie McGlory. She was from Oklahoma City. I met her in Paris at a wonderful hotel called the Mougely. It's a theatrical hotel where all the show people stayed because we were working for the military at the time. I was doing special service shows. And she was on my show with the Evely brothers, Phil and Don, I worked with. And they were all on the show. And I met this lady. She was on my, a singing star on the show. And um, we became such great friends. I loved her so much and so talented that we traveled together, stayed together like married women and husbands, or so, but we weren't. We were great friends. Her personality and uh, everything she did, I loved, and she liked me. So we got along beautifully. And we traveled all over the world, from Turkey to Istanbul, from Vietnam, even Vietnam, all over Europe, everywhere in the world, London, Australia. Uh, this lady is very dear to my heart. I just lost her. She just passed away of cancer. And uh, this beautiful, beautiful performer, beautiful, beautiful soul, I want to dedicate this show this afternoon for her and show what great talent she was uh, and a great human being. She entertained those troops in Vietnam, me, Martha Ray, and Mamie Van Doren. We, and we stayed there in Saigon, Da Nang, La Trang. She, the boys loved her in Vietnam. And um, I want to ded dedicate this show to her. And uh, I'd like to show a clip of some of the things that she used to do entertaining the troops in Vietnam. Okay. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Life's really worth living when you are mirth giving. Why can't I give some to you? When skies are gray, Outs in the sun shining through I want to be happy But I won't be happy Till I make you happy too When skies are gray And you say you are blue I'll send the sun shining through I want to be happy But I won't be Till I make you happy too. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, 
and thank you for coming out tonight. I hope you're having very happy holidays. We want you to sit back, relax, and just enjoy yourselves tonight. Hello, 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 hello. I said hello, Dolly. Well, hello, my Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. You're looking swell, Harry. I can tell, Mary. You're still going, you're still crowing, you're still going strong. I feel the room is swaying. My band is playing some of his old favorite songs from way back when. So take my rap, fellas. Find me a vacant laugh, fellas. Dolly won't go away again. You know, ladies and gentlemen, here's a song from a show called Hello, Dolly. And uh, Carol Channing was one of the dollies in this show, Carol Channing. And what I would like to do for you is to give you my impression of what some of the legendary stars might sound like singing Hello, Dolly. Now, here's the very wonderful Miss Judy Garland. Might sound something like this. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. Now, here's one of my, well, she was my favorite. Actress, how can we forget the very wonderful Miss Betty Davis? Betty Davis. Darling, oh, there you are. Thank you. You know, darling, as I always say, Peter, Peter. Peter. I must have my Peter. <laughs> because you see, nothing is any good unless you can look up from the dinner table or turn around in bed and know that your Peter is there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One of the greatest character actors I think that ever appeared in films and he also had a wonderful television series called The Real McCoys and this is the very talented Mr. Walter Brennan Walter Brennan Walter Brennan we are we I tell you Dolly you're still going and you're still flowing, still looking good. You know, I tell you, today's my birthday, and I'm, I'm 98, 98 years, and she's 21, and we're getting hitched. We're gonna get hitched, yes, yes, yes. And they say, where's the difference in age? It could be fatal, but dad blame it. What the hell? If she dies, she dies, yes. <laughs> Now, here's a wonderful uh, actress. They call her the Vamp of High Camp. And this is the one and only Miss Mae West. Oh, hello, darling. I see you're still going, and you're still crawling, and you're still going strong. Well, take a little advice from me. Dearie, it's not the men in your life that counts, it's the life in your men. Oh, mm. a man in the house is worth two on the street. You know, men want to know what kind of a woman I am. Oh, 
Sorry, but I can't give out samples. Oh. Oh, Dolly, you look like a good woman, but a real bad, bad man. Oh. Hello, tall, dark, and handsome. Is that a gun in your pocket? Or oh, you happen to see me? Oh. I, I always let a man come in my house, any man. I like the way he slides down my chimney. Oh. Miss Tallulah Bankhead. Remember Tallulah Bankhead? Yeah. Tallulah Bankhead, okay. Oh my God, Dolly. You do look divine, Dolly. I tell you, Dolly, I have been waiting for my ship for so long, my pier has collapsed. Oh my God, Dolly. I want you to meet a very wonderful entertainer. He's the only one who has a voice deeper than mine. It's the legendary Mr. Louis Satchmo Armstrong. Wait, I'm sorry, Johnny. We forgot about Pearl, we forgot about Pearly May. Look, yeah, here's Pearl Bailey. Pearl Bailey. Pearl Bailey. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, they, they, honey, they almost left me off the show tonight. Oh, oh my God, darling. Yes, honey, uh, hello, honey. Hello, uh, Harry. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. I said hello, darling. Well, hello, darling. It's so nice to have you back where you belong, oh, honey. You're looking swell, honey. I can tell. You're still going, you're crying, honey, you're going strong. I feel the room, honey, swing. My band is playing some of them old favorite songs from way back when. And so, honey, take a rap, fellas, find her a bacon lap, honey. Darling, honey, don't you go away. Darling, honey, she's here to stay. Oh, honey, I'm going to mama stay right here, Don. Thank you very much. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Don. Oh, thank you, Don. Thank you. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, now here is um, the legendary, how can we forget? The legendary Mr. Louis Satchmo Armstrong. Sing a little hello, Dolly. Some of our old favorite songs way back when. So, yes, take my rabbit, fellas. Find me a vacant lap, yes. Bob, 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 yes. Bob, 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 Thank you, folks. Thank you. That's Margie McGlory, my dear friend. What great talent. That was in 1960 when I met her in Paris. And we went to London after that, and we worked the Blue Angel in London. And uh, I stayed there. I went to school at RADA in England for a while, studying acting, and she did too. She worked the clubs, you know, the cabarets. Um, but, you know, those boys in Vietnam, when we were in Vietnam, those boys, fell in love with that lady. She was so talented. She gave her soul. She not just entertained them like, Mar like Martha Ray. Martha Ray was a nurse, actually. Helped the boys, talked to them like a psychiatrist. That's what she did. Margie did the same thing. Mamie Van Dorn, another one, same thing. We were all there in Saigon, Da Nang, La Trang, all over getting the helicopters going. Those boys in Vietnam, it was sensational. And I want to tell you, we were together when John F. Kennedy was assassinated in 63 in London, England. And we were working a club called the Blue Angel for Noel Harrison. Rex Harrison's son had a club there called the Blue Angel. 
and he was the compere of the show. Compere means MC, you know. And uh, but then you know it just it's all in my book. You got to get the book to see and hear. It's a journey of my life traveling around the globe. And when I first came back, after I first came back to America, when Vietnam left in 72, I arrived here in Hollywood, back to Hollywood. So I haven't been back since I was a kid. When I arrived, I, I stayed at a place called um, the Hyatt on Sunset. And there was that uh, wonderful comedian there, Rip Taylor, staying there. And Tony, what's his name? Um, not Tony Bennett. Um, well, Martin, Dean Martin's brother, uncle, uncle, that's it, Barr, Leonard Barr. Dean Martin's uncle was living there, too. And I, we were all friends there. And then I got a job at the E Little Club doing showcases. That's where Skippy Lowe became, a, like, um, they call me um, a star maker. I became a star maker of young talent, presenting young talent around town in Hollywood. So then I start doing showcases. And you know, I start at the E Little Club with Joan Rivers. Joan used to have the showcase there on Sunday and no, Sat Friday and Saturday. And I was there Sunday and Monday doing showcases for Marshall Edson, who owned that room on Cannon in Beverly Hills and um, the E Little Club. Then when that closed, I moved over to the Hyatt on Sunset. I discovered a lot of people. People ask me, who have you discovered? Well, I'll tell you who I've discovered. I discovered Billy Ray Cypress. He was at the Hyatt playing the guitar and sing. Remember Billy Ray Cypress? Now he's an actor. So you know something? At one night at the Hyatt on Sunset, there was a guy by John Carradine Sr. who was sitting at the bar drinking, had arthritis in his hand. He used to take his hands with the glass and drinking. He came to me and he says, you know, Skip, you should do a public access show. You should interview stars. You should interview directors. I said, really? Why don't you be my first? Guess what? He was my first. Aldo Ray was sitting in the next booth. <laughs> he was my second, Aldo Ray. Remember him? I said to Eldo, John, I got Gene Wallace, Cornell Weil. I start doing old stars. And that's where the old legendary stars came in my showcases, interviewing people. And the young kids I was interviewing, uh, the talent of the nights I was doing on a Monday night. Now I'm, I'm doing uh, one at Trilusa in Beverly Hills. I'm there every Monday night at Trilusa on Camden, Camden and Brighton Way, you know. It's, it's a singing star of the futures. You know, these young kids have to, have to have a place. They don't get paid. They just come with their music. They get up and they sing and they work out. And it's a wonderful, we have a piano player or you can bring your CDs and work it out. It's wonderful to keep ex exercising your voice, your songs, knowing what you find yourself, who you are. And we have dancers, we have comedians, some of them, but it's hard for comics because it's a, it's a restaurant. You, know, you never know kind of language, you know, so the owners of the restaurants are very tough about that. And I am too, believe me. But I must say that uh, doing all these showcases for so many years, I've been doing them, I discovered Michael Feinstein and Billy Ray, and I could go so many places with a lot of people I've discovered. And um, I don't want to just talk about it, but I want to say one thing about uh, Billy Ray Cypress. He was always so generous to me. When he gets in town, he performs, he sends me an invitation to come and all that. But I want to thank thank uh, Hollywood, West Hollywood. I've been doing those tele, uh, this public access shows so many years. And they've been so generous. And uh, this year, I'm so happy that I got the award. And uh, that was very sweet of them, I must say. Now I'm over at a room called the Balage Hotel on Tuesday nights. I do Trilusa Mondays. Tuesday nights, I'm over at the Balage at 8 o'clock. It's on San Vicente, you know. It's a wonderful hotel presenting young singers, dancers, and all that. 
I even present belly dancers. You know, this year has been a tough year for me. I've lost a lot of dear friends in this town, especially Shelley Winters, who I was very close to. And uh, I've interviewed her many times. She was a great, great star, great lady. And um, I'm very, very unhappy about that. And I just lost my dearest, dearest friend, who I love, Margie McGlory. Uh, this lady, I just love her. Anyway, let's show another clip of her because I really love her. Okay, let's let's see another clip of Margie. Hello. The musical Hello Dolly is one of the most successful musicals on Broadway, and what I would like to do for you is to give you my impression of what some of the legendary entertainers how they might sound singing Hello Dolly or just being themselves. Here's the divine Sarah Vaughan. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you are. Yeah.
say, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know when I see her like that and she's gone. I'll never see her again, only on film. Uh, it is so hard when you love somebody. I know it's we've traveled, we've lived in all the hotels like gypsies. And I'm going to really miss her. That's one dearest friend in my whole life I really loved. And so talented. I just wanted to show you what a person that she was, what a great talent. And we met so many boys when we returned back from Vietnam that used to see our shows and just came up to us again. We keep contact, you know, on the internet. Matter of fact, if you get into the internet on uh, YouTube, you know, YouTube, there's a wonderful thing on the internet about my old senior ladies. Uh, they did. They're a lady on 97. I have a lady 84. And if you dial in YouTube and then put The True Hollywood, The True Hollywood, you can get my showcase from, from the kids. And it's wonderful. They're so funny and so... I have this 97-year-old lady. I have an 87-year-old tap dancer, Happy Hall. Uh, I have another lady who is 65. Great singers. It's very fun. I've enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon to dedicate this show to my friend Margie.